Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl, Cranky Gikarabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. Unlike my hair. If you're not, welcome to the party. It's just the story of my life. Uh, anyway, today is the 18th of March, 2024. Hello. And sometime in the evening. It is uh, 2338. It's more like night. Let's just not call things evening when it's total night. Okay. Mm. Right. Oh, um, what just happened over there? I need better lighting. I, I really don't want to be long. Okay. Let me, all right. Let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. Sometimes they use a small G for God. Uh, yeah, etc. I don't have an editor. I will one day get one if the Lord wills. Okay. And then I'm very potentially wearing app makeup. If I am, you will know. If I'm not, then you all know. My hair is just such a raving mess, but doesn't matter. It's growing. That's all that matters. Okay. Right. Oh, I'm probably gonna be doing admin in the background. Admin. Edits. Yes. So if I'm looking up there, that's what's going on over there. And then it's the segment down bottom. When I feel like this, I just it bores me. The living daylights out of me. Anyway, I'm only human after all. I'm only human. I'm trying to pinch my cheeks to show you that when you prick me, I bleed. I think that happened over there. That was nice and quick today. Anyway, moving on. Right. Let's just get to the point. I'm ish, guys. I'm attacked, I'm afflicted, just like this top of mine that's ghostly. Yeah, I am afflicted. I'm under attack, y'all, again. There is a uh, ish, y'all. I'm tired of talking about this, but ish, whatever, you know, like it is what it is. This here is my dear diary, so I come here and I just discuss all of these um, afflictions of my person by the kingdom of darkness. We just talk about it. You know, I like to say, you know when you already have a flaw, like whatever it is that you have going down for yourself as a flaw, when you get involved in the occult, it just gets worse. So if before you dabbled you were generally a little bit of a liar when you dabble with witchcraft because the devil loves to just ride the wave of existing casualties in your heart you will be come the kind of person that lies your it lies yourself out of love like because you see the devil steals he kills he destroys that's just what he does um and the 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 people that he destroys are the ones that allow him that let him at the end of the day the lord has given us authority to make uh, sorry yeah to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us <clears throat> The devil, it is written of him in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, that he prances around like a roaring lion seeking whomever he may devour. And so if you put yourself in a position to be consumed by a ravenous lion, you will be consumed by said ravenous lion and he will not have mercy on you. He will tear you up until you end up in hellfire. Uh, as human beings, unfortunately, we are not born perfect. We're born with a myriad of flaws. We are born with a sinful nature. And just as every person has their good side or their good virtues, they also have vices. Yeah, God has gifted us by his common grace. Amazingly, thank you. Right? with certain things that we just have going down for ourselves naturally that belong to the fruit of the holy spirit um even though we're not born again like there are people who are just naturally very loving uh, without redemption there are people who are just very patient they can wait without redemption there are people who are very uh, temperate gentle without redemption there are people who are very faithful loyal without redemption even though those are the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you get my point. You can just pick anyone from the tree and uh, spot any spot someone that you've met before that that really really like kills it in that particular fruit. But it is when we come to Christ that we are sanctified and made to grow in strength in emitting these fruit, and where it becomes a non-negotiable for us to bear them. We don't have an option to be impatient as, Christ as Christians. We don't have an option to be unfaithful. We don't have an option to be short uh, and, and not gentle. We don't have an option. Yeah, we, we basically start to operate under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit who magnifies these fruit uh, in us in, in increasing measure. So when we get saved, there is a comprehensive transformation of a person who then starts to bear all these nine fruit of the Holy Spirit in increasing measure over the course of their lives. As the lord sanctifies them but prior to coming to christ there are people who automatically just naturally walk in certain fruit not all of them certain fruit that's the common grace of god but 
on the opposite side of that particular coin they then of course are the vices the fruit of the sinful nature they are also described in galatians 5 and there's quite a few of them there's there's sorceries there's dissensions there's rivalries there's enmity strife dissension i mentioned that right discord orgies um yeah you get my point just all different kinds of nasty things that people can be these are also described in, in galatians 5 and if a person is bearing these that's how you ch you check that's how you know them by these fruit by bearing the fruit of the sinful nature you can successfully conclude upon observing a person for any amount of time that they're not born again even if they claim to be saved okay uh one minute sorry i was just looking at my edits up there yeah you can gauge from there that they they're either saved or not just by mere virtue of observing unsaved fruit okay uh, consistently in them i'm not speaking like nobody's perfect however i like to use the saying by not saying but i like to use this, this this particular analogy by paul washer in one sermon that he did once upon a time where he was describing uh salvation and how to know if you're saved and he said that people who get born again, who claim to have been born again but bear no fruit are like a, a, a person who gets to the office late like an hour late two hours and their boss then asks them why are you late and then this human being that looks completely normal neat wearing office apparel and everything a suit a tie some shoelaced shoes then says that on his way to work he was hit by a 10 ton truck and then he had to like basically patch himself up um of course paraphrasing extremely this particular analogy, this particular analogy, patch himself up and somehow uh, wait for the paramedics or the doctors stitched him up and whatnot and all different kinds of things happened. His car was towed uh, and then he was finally eventually able to then make it to the office. What would the response of the boss be? Either this person is completely mad, they've lost their mind, right? Or they're lying through their teeth. One minute. Either this person is lying, the boss would, would conclude one of two things. Either they have a mental illness because they, they they can't possibly believe what they're saying or they're just a massive pathological uh liar they're lying because there is no way that you can meet with a 10 ton truck yeah and not be permanently changed there is no way that you can get hit by something so big as a 10 ton truck is there such a thing as a 10 ton truck you get my point there's no there's no such uh, there's no way that you can ever get hit by a 10 ton truck and not be permanently changed and then he goes on right ahead to transform that analogy to speak about how it is that god is like a 10 ton truck that you cannot meet with something so massive gargantuan as god and not be permanently changed your your nature your your state if you get hit by a 10 ton truck you get reduced to mush on the highway you have to be collected with shovels so similarly too when you get met with god there must be a transformation that is observable by literally everybody in your life everything that has ever seen you walking these streets must have an opinion about how it is that you have changed if there is no such change if you're still doing the same things that you were doing yesterday you dear individual were never really born again were you if you are still rolling these streets partaking in debauchery if you're still drinking it up a storm in the club every weekend if you are still whatever it is that might be the things that people do prior to coming to jesus yeah if you're still doing all that and nobody can tell that you've had a, a, a change of heart only difference is that on sundays you go to church yeah but like you're still clubbing with the same girls you still what not yeah no you're not born again on that day uh that analogy is absolutely perfect there is no way that you can meet with something so massive as god and not be permanently changed absolutely impossible for the life of us it's not possible even in the slightest well similarly too there is no way that you can continue to walk in the fruit of the sinful nature and not be successfully concluded by christians who are making observations of you as lost because you have not had the transforming power of the holy spirit so you don't get to continuously walk in these sinful nature fruit and say don't judge me as soon as you call yourself a christian we get to judge you it's that basic right because the scripture says that the judgment begins with the church of christ but not only that call out the immoral man from among you right but this is not what this message is about i was just highlighting the fruit of the sinful nature and the fruit of the holy spirit to help you understand that naturally we are born slaves to sin slaves to sin and so we naturally bear fruit of the sinful nature and just like with the fruit of the holy spirit there are certain 
fruit that we naturally have that God has given us by common grace that we bear without redemption just naturally three long suffering that's you 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 can write out a lot of nonsense you're very temperate you're relaxed you're always calm uh yeah but then because you're not born again you will have flaws in like seven of the nine fruit you're just going to be basically rather rolling very freely and swimmingly in the fruit of the sinful nature you're going to be a liar you're going to be a deceiver a witch you're going to be a fornicator you're going to be partaking in unsavory business practices you're going to be shoddy underhand and always passing bribes to police uh, after a drunken stupor of a night out stuff like that those are fruit of the sinful nature okay yeah but just like the fruit of the holy spirit similarly too with the fruit of the sinful sinful nature do some of us have um from birth certain vices that are stronger than others there are people we all have flaws we are bo I'm born dead in trespasses and sins and since did our parents conceive us but all flaws are equal but some flaws are more equal than others we all have vices and even in christ we have to make war with those vices by the spirit put to death the deeds of the body we all have vices but some people have got a stronger inclination towards certain vices just as some people have got a stronger inclination towards certain virtues even apart from the holy spirit and i'm today trying to communicate about vices about vices and it is these vices that cause people to gauge themselves on a barometer a scale uh and say that based on the fact that they don't bear vices as richly as certain people that they on a scale of one to ten would highly likely make it to heaven if they died this is the kind of stuff that makes people believe that entering into heaven is a scale you know a balance like i'm more good than bad and so because i am more good than bad i'm generally safe and this is based on a generally accepted or a generally embraced societal agreement as to what makes for a seriously bad vice by our own standards our standards not the standards of god but the standards of humanity we have got barometers that we imagine once you have tipped past a certain point you're far gone you're what is called a sociopath you're what is called a a, a criminal psychopath you are what is called avoidable um with a, a a tendency towards a neurological disorder a psychosis yeah because of you naturally gliding in these vices so based on how well you were away certain vices you can have people use you as a barometer a gauge to basically call themselves great because you're like just that nasty you're that terrible but thank god when we come to the lord we learn the folly of thinking that way because at the very end of the day what is imperative to gauge is that sin is sin is sin in the sight of god and he forgives big ones and small ones ever so ubiquitously and the biggest and baddest of murderers in this world that repent and give their lives to jesus christ will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven in comparison to those people that called themselves little white liars right we have agreed in society that certain vices are super bad certain inclinations towards certain crimes are super bad people with uh, a horrible temper that are always fighting everybody in the street uh are called kind of psycho psychotic like gangsters people that because of a natural inclination towards ill-gotten gain they partake in theft a lot from the time that they were kids they just could not learn that you don't steal that you don't take money from your mother's purse and then next thing they end up being gangsters or whatever they end up being thieves money launderers they end up yeah those are considered to be vices that are more extreme than what would be considered a little white lie right then there are other vices that are more psychological vices that are psychological all right and these these go deep and you can spot them in a person from very early on from your friend in school when you're still just in grade eight grade nine there are certain character flaws that people have that when in 20 years from the date that you knew them as a child they for instance end up committing murder you're shocked but not too shocked you're shocked that oh my goodness Tabo killed 10 people. Tabo murdered his wife. Manza killed his friend. Tsehovazo murdered her husband. Bingi killed her children. Yeah, there are people when, that when such reports come 15 years since you last saw them, 20 years since you last saw them, you're not shocked because of having worn certain psychological vices when you were young when you knew them at the time when you were hanging 10 with them 
when you think back when you think back on how they used to be upon there being a report in the grapevine that they drowned their four kids shocked as you are you are not shocked yeah shocked as you are you are not shocked the lord can heal anything and anyone because he's god there are people however that reaching them for jesus very potentially would be a lot harder because they have psychological vices more even than physical ones where it is that it's literally a mental illness it's a mental blockage it's a psyche problem there is something kind of unhinged crazy thank you you know using small words sometimes helps crazy about this person there is something that has always been unhinged about this person they've always just had strange behaviors and when 20 years down the line you find out that they drowned their four children you are like oh my goodness that is so tragic but i can see how she got there i can see how she did that because i remember how she used to be there are certain people where upon you finding out that they murdered some people they're a serial killer now you you just you, you can you can see it you can see how things magnified to that point and i'm trying to counsel human beings in these streets to gate to basically look within oneself okay check out a mirror look at the man in the mirror like that michael jackson song and <coughs> and calculate <coughs> I apologize calculate what what were your vices what are your vices and do you have psychological ones do you have a psychosis i'm not speaking lying here i am not speaking being a bully like just teasing other little girls on the school playground that's a vice it is physical and it's aggressive i am speaking about dangerous vices that are and they're not as easily felt or seen but they exist in the certain in the inappropriate re reaction thank you the inappropriate reaction to societal stimuli by a person that 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 ought raise alarm bells in anybody looking at this person a liar lies to cover whatever it is that they're trying to cover or they're trying to give themselves clout or they try whatever it is that they're doing they're they you you quickly are unable to pick up when somebody has lied because then eventually the truth comes to the surface and it's like but why did you lie a thief it's like but like my pen was here and now it's gone my money was here but now it's gone right that's a crazy person that's actually stealing from you but the ones you 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 really need to like essentially just constantly like put, you know zoom your camera in on are those that aren't necessarily going to pinch your pen or your money from your pocket but those who are going to react in certain ways when certain things happen and the way in which they react is wrong it's creepy it's it's not right it's not the way that you should be responding for a kid this age and especially when you come from a normal family when when there's nothing happening to describe or explain why you're like this it's not like your mom is always beating you it's not like your dad is always raping you you come from a healthy household and yet you are strangely unemotional there is something eerie about your reaction to life stimuli your lack of empathy your lack of sympathy your lack of regard for pain or emotion just guys th th there are people who cannot be understood as to why they are emotionally absent granted that they're only 17 granted that they're only 12 and granted also that they come from a loving family when a child just automatically ex exhibits certain so like sociopathic traits from very early with there being no explanation for it like rape like a torturous mother and unloving untouching loving dad when there is no explanation behind it this is a kid that is born with a demonic inclination there it's like literally over before it starts they are demon possessed from birth essentially kids that have already been set up for failure by entities latching onto them from the time that they're just children babies because of likely either a generational curse or some irresponsible on the part of the parents like i like to say okay so i had this cousin that used to smoke when she was uh, pregnant and uh despite all the counsel in the world against su such behavior she just would not stop because she literally just did not care what people thought and she would do it everywhere in public she would do it in front of us she wasn't even trying to hide it and she the, the baby daddy uh, nobody could say anything to her you know yeah type thing and her babies uh, appeared to come out right type setup thing but when it comes to such 
uh, irresponsible activity. You don't really see it in the physical human being that has eventually been born until later. You don't see what the effects of, of drugs, like my cousin with her was cigarettes, but there are people who take drugs when they're pregnant. Crack moms give birth to crack babies. When I was in, in um, what do you call this, in primary school, the thing that made me decide that I'm never ever going to start smoking, I already told you guys that story, but then I did smoke when I was 17. I did a short about it describing how it is that when the devil influences your life and, and um, stealthily, you know, just kind of worms his way in, you will literally change your mind about things that you had even gained conviction you would never do. So I did eventually smoke at the age of 17, despite having decided when I was about 11, 12 in primary school when there was this one small former smoker that came to give a whole motivational speech to the kids there in my primary school, us. And this man had a hole in his, in his throat and he used to speak by pressing something and he had a funny little voice and it was just so sad, right? And he gave like a whole speech and in the speech he also gave examples of smoking while pregnant smoking while pregnant and there was a story that he covered with photos and everything imagery of this one little baby girl that was born to a woman that would that would smoke like two 20s a day while heavily pregnant the baby when she was born was always crying and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with this baby is she colicky uh what is going on they would do tests and everything would come back perfectly normal until they made an observation that the kid every time there is a uh what do you call this like whenever there are the ashes in an ash tray in the environment where she lived she would go there crawl towards these ashes and start eating them and that's the only time that she would stop crying she would eat the ashes of the cigarette and then only she would stop crying because of the fact that she was so dependent on cigarettes from early because of the fact that she was basically unable to be a normal baby because there was a desperate need and addiction that she was born with they literally ended up manufacturing a cigarette for the baby they manufactured cigarettes for her they made her cigarettes in order that she might get to a point where she could then start being trained to be weaned off cigarettes because while she was still a baby it was impossible to just withhold this thing from her because it was almost as cruel according to the doctors as withholding food from a baby and expecting it to survive that's what happened to a baby that was born to a cigarette mom similarly to you get the same thing happening with crack moms, like mothers who are on cig on cocaine and crack, all different kinds of drugs. The babies are born, if not with birth defects, but with like original addic addictions, even though the baby did not sign up for it. I like to say in my ministry that people who practice witchcraft while pregnant are like crack moms. They're like cigarette moms. They're like cocaine moms in a spiritual sense. They are taking some pretty hard knock drugs while heavily pregnant with babies and these drugs are infiltrating their bloodstream going into the babies and causing the babies to be born with a natural inclination towards that drug and you will only witness it later on when the baby is actually eating ashes out of an ashtray to see that the baby has got a cigarette addiction even though it has never smoked a single cigarette in its life the responsibility is the moms babies born to parents who are constantly consulting witch doctors parents who never mind are consulting witch doctors but in and of themselves are practicing witch doctors one second parents who are in and of themselves are disangoma they are practicing themselves they are being consulted by people and they're always i guess in and of themselves consulting with entities demons in order to help their clients along yeah people who engage in a severe and it doesn't even have to be severe but occult magic while pregnant they are crack moms in the worst way they're cigarette moms in the worst way indeed sometimes the babies can be born and live normal lives without having a cigarette addiction like with my cousin she was always smoking while pregnant but her kids did not come out craving cigarettes but the kid the baby that was described that was uh, communicated to us when i was in primary school by that smoking guy who was eating ash uh, what, cigarettes out of an ashtray that baby it was over for her before it started yeah you win some you lose some sometimes the baby escapes and it is the decision by the decision of god no one can say to god what have you done it is it is at his discretion the lord can make a decision who he hedges and who he allows to be afflicted by certain entities and so some babies are born incubated from their parents irresponsibility for whatever purpose god has in that regard while others he just leaves the consequences of the parents actions to essentially manifest in the baby you know he will visit the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generations it is biblical and so babies belonging to parents that are involved in occult magic are essentially never mind crack babies but they are witchcraft babies and
and witchcraft babies, this witchcraftness of theirs manifests in a myriad of ways. And sometimes it can be in a social disorder. It can be in a personality disorder. It can be in the way that this child strangely is. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie. I hate to use this as an analogy, but it's thoroughly similar to that. What in the world have I done? Ugh. It is thoroughly similar to that. There is a movie called The Omen. Yes, The Omen. It's quite the gory little thing over there where a child is born essentially from birth, like kind of demonic, like a little bit of a Antichrist 666 baby. And this baby is unreliable from the moment it comes out of its mother's womb. But the nun in the movie struggles to employ this, the, the instructions that she has been given by some other priest guy to neutralize that baby, essentially kill the baby. It's a horror movie, okay? Other Otherwise, it's going to be the bane of the future of the existence of the future that is coming right and for obvious reasons this nun is like i'm not about to go and kill a baby saves the baby and this baby even be long be not even the baby did not even have to become a toddler or pre yeah you get my point when the baby was still goo goo gaga and unable to articulate itself it killed a woman by causing the woman with its mind or whatever to jump off a building now of course that is like a little bit of an extreme uh you know narrative it's a movie so it takes things a little bit too far but yes indeed it is possible that people can't give birth to kind of omen like babies where it is that parents parents are relatively normalish people and they are not raising their children in any kind of hostility they are not abusive they're not unloving they're not uncaring they're not unattentive their parents in a very average sense of the word really this kid should come up being like regular children and yet they exhibit omenic symptoms just like the baby in the movie the omen where it is that this kid is a killer obviously from the time it comes out of its mother's womb it's already a psychopath this kid is already a sociopath this baby has already got a natural inclination towards being a murderer and you will not pick this up as a mom or as a dad until your kid you know that's if you pick it up you know it's just it was, does things that will make you wonder but i didn't teach you like this i didn't raise you like this like what's going on huh when the devil has your child you will spin around on the spot from pillar to post going to child psychologists and swinging on a chandelier like sia and getting no help until this kid will appear to snap out of it and grow up and go out there in the world and become a lawyer and then one day the lawyer that everybody loves has killed his wife and children and when he kills his wife and children the mother rocking on a chair will then be like i i, I saw like my son has always had something evil in him there's always just been something unhinged about my child when the mother gets the report that there that her son has been arrested for the murder of his wife and children she stands there at the door as the police are giving her this information and is just blank faced and not so much shocked just i guess with with a, an expression on some oh so this is this is what it took i guess all these years i expected that it would happen sooner i was surprised it didn't happen in high school i wasn't surprised it didn't happen in primary school i was surprised it did not happen at varsity i am surprised that it took him getting to his late 30s i guess yeah um yeah and then she goes and sees the sun like when you can tell that your child has got something evil in them look within engage in introspection be honest with yourself where you like my irresponsible cousin out just smoking some cigarettes while heavily pregnant with your children one minute were you doing something that is the equivalent or the tantamount of that I, like guys i'm trying to explain that the people need to look out within themselves y'all need to know what to self-diagnose when you want help because there are certain people who from the very get-go are gonna have a hard time like a struggle do you understand to respond to the gospel because of being latched onto from the umbilical cord essentially to by entities because of being latched onto by entities by demons these demons of which were gladly made to come and visit and knock on the door of a child because of the irresponsibility of the parents because of the irresponsibility of the mom because of the irresponsibility of the dad whatever it is that they were doing while this baby was either being conceived or while this baby was in the belly could result in this child being born with psychological defects uh, first of all 
like things like for instance asking for a pregnancy through the occult that would likely be one of the biggest reasons why a child would get born with a natural sociopathy or a psychopathy but even if it was natural conception but the parents however were involved in occult magic like partaking in seances perpetually or never mind seances but just oh, bewitching your girl's career while you're heavily pregnant all that stuff you don't like you're literally risking the mental health of your child you could be eating drinking all like t t taking all of your vitamins your folic acid and all of your fruit and vegetables to make sure that your pregnancy is a healthy one and you carry the term make sure you don't drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes during your pregnancy and yet your baby can be born with a birth defect that is undetected because it's spiritual because you who was taking your folic acid like multivitamins and what have you was were also alongside it consulting entities like just because you were healthy physically does not mean that you are healthy spiritually spiritually people are so irresponsible and things have ramifications things have consequences guys spiritual affairs have consequences be they positive or negative like there are there are things that people bear when you reap you sow so when you sow you reap and so when you are reaping certain fruit in the future sometimes as a mother out you chilling as a 65 year old woman rocking as on your chair or chilling on your bed upon receiving the news of your adult daughter having killed her husband and is now in prison blank faced and unfazed by what she just did you know that your kid had it in them to end up like that there are people who when they kill it's shocking because it came out of nowhere it was a crime of passion they were angry very bitterly for a season because they found their wife sleeping with another man and then boo committed murder it's like oh my goodness temple killed it's shocking but there are others who when they kill even though it's their first crime and they have no priors there are people in their lives from the past that knew them that are like <sighs> okay like it's not nice to know this news but man she had something in her it, she had it in her she was unhinged and i have a friend like that from my high school y'all um, what okay this is what i'm trying to explain to you okay when when you get involved in devil worship when you get involved in witchcraft all right you exacerbate vices you exacerbate vices so whatever it is that you have as a natural problem if you are a liar when you start to do witchcraft you're gonna be pathological and incurable you're going to be a nutbag of a liar to a point of likely even self-destructing because of how you can't tell basic truth ruining your own relationships you're going to be masochistic self-destructive in a way that really why don't you just stop i mean come on why don't you just stop because here it is that now you're losing your husband here it is that now you're losing your job girl and the lie that you told was so unnecessary i had a friend like that in high school but this is not the one that i'm talking about oh goodness she used to love lying and i don't know how in the world now that she's a witch because all of my girls from high school cast spells on me now that she's been dabbling with the occult i can't even begin to imagine what her relationships look like today when when you part to, okay when you've got a natural virtue like if you're super loving naturally when you come to christ you just become basically something or someone that's walking on water in in light of the fruit that is love but similarly to with the fruit of the sinful nature if at all you were a player historically like you you were a fornicator of note you had like a sexual addiction like eric benet back in the day you were a little casanova when you use witchcraft when you start to dabble with occult magic i don't even know what is worse than a guy that sleeps with like four women in a week i guess this time you partake in orgies this time you get a sexual perversion unto homosexual sex now you're, you're you're engaging with other men and you're having foursomes with men and women yeah you start to pre be prepared to do things that once upon a time were a no-go for you within your sexual perversion you imagined you had restrictions and boundaries but when you turn to the darkness when you do witchcraft you will end up having if as a guy that has a sexual perversion you will at some point in the future literally experiment with gay sex despite having called yourself a hard knock hot-blooded male that is heterosexual that's the kind of stuff that happens when people dabble with the occult that's what the like proper witchcraft the devil rides that wave do you understand what i'm saying he rides the wave of your existing vices he not only infiltrates new vices so you can get given a brand spanking new set of problems that you have things that you struggled to conquer already you're gonna have brand spanking new ones given you and then the ones that were already there are gonna grow fangs they're gonna grow hair peach fuzz they're gonna grow hairs they're gonna get nails they are going to have a life on, on their own they're gonna move by themselves like a poltergeist and you are therefore going to be very severely insufferable in that particular regard my ex-boyfriend had a natural inclination towards ill-gotten gain it is no wonder why today he's such a mad man 
with theft in the occult or with things that he's stealing from me things he's stolen from people he's just become a worse version of what it is that he had as a flaw if he had never dabbled with the occult he would have been able to perhaps psychologically manage himself knowing that this is not right basically his conscience would have come to the rescue every so often he would have known that i don't want to be this kind of man if anything he knew that he didn't want to be the kind of man that he was originally i was able to achieve some kind of success in staying his hand from being so dishonest when we were together but that's just the thing i wasn't god i wasn't the holy spirit so he would default back into his sticky velcro hands that would just keep on taking things from people that don't belong to him uh, that, that's just the way that my ex was and when then he became involved in darkness he just got he became a worse version of than of that i remember one time just uh, like outside of the club that is carfax and we were having a discussion and i was like dude you and i have been together for a couple of years i don't want to go i don't want to go and visit a man in prison i also don't want to be a widow a young widow because obviously this relationship of ours is going to get far because we're in love and we are talking about the future but if i if we're going to do this for the long haul you have got to stay away from all of these dishonest acts that you're involved in because then you're putting me in a position to besook you with some children in prison you're putting me in a position to go to a funeral of a of a man that died from like you know crime like you need to stop because this stuff is only going to grow worse and worse it's going to get fangs you also want to enter into business you're going to have an inclination within you a bone in you that's going to get tickled onto things like money laundering because you're just dishonest you like free things that don't belong to you and so far as nobody sees that you stole like stop this thing needs to change here it is that i was trying to transform a man without the holy spirit i didn't have christ myself and it didn't work all i did was basically you know refrigerate uh, for five seconds something that was already rotting meat uh, yeah i just put him in a deep freezer for a little hour longer to slow down the putrefaction process but then the whole rotting process continued to fester and fever and feverishly at that after we broke up and he just went from bad to worse because there was no god there was nothing staying him and involvement in the occult exacerbated that in involvement in the occult would have been the equivalent of the tantamount of grabbing that like defrosting rotten meat and putting it in the sun it'll just accelerate things even worse than it being on the kitchen counter mm. yeah that is exactly what under heaven uh happens to people when they dabble with the occult you put yourselves in the most perfect thriving environmental conditions to worsen in a particular vice so when you have already got a flaw ebatung, know where it can go know how far you can go and seek the lord's face to cure you from your mental illness frankly because that's what it is people need to do some self introspection some self uh checking the bible says you must test yourself to see if you're in the faith the lord has a thing about looking in the mirror we need to keep on looking in the mirror we know what are our vices we know what are the things that we originally have that are problematic that we need to really check like really check like constantly and even when we come to the faith make sure that it does not keep on rearing its ugly head like you know that game um at the arcade with the little uh, uh dollikies popikies popping out and you have to like bam with, with like a hammer on the head and however many of them you hit you then get like a teddy bear or whatever mm our vices are like those things they keep on rearing their ugly heads and throughout our walk in christ we have to keep on hammering them down so we can win a teddy bear from god or whatever but when you are not in christ those little popogies that pop out you don't even see that you need to hammer them down and then when you partake in the occult they then become feverish monsters they they grow fangs they get bigger they're like the original thing that they, they've always been just fatter juicier making you therefore a worse human being than you historically were one minute i'm struggling to multitask i'm looking for images for background in my video uh, i haven't done that and it's like so late at night and my computer struggles to do multiple processes at the same time so if i i don't just if i don't get this done while i'm chatting here i'm just never gonna get it done one minute yeah okay guys uh when you don't check yourself you might end up basically being so far gone that now i mean yeah everybody can be selfish at any given moment while they're still breathing on this earth but you don't want to get to a point where society wants nothing to do with you anymore while god will always want something to do with you for as long as you're still in these streets walking around as a human being that is drawing breath there comes a time when society doesn't want you you don't want to get to the level of psychopathic like behavior until people don't want you 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 want to be salvaged before you can get that far do you understand what i'm saying it's not an idea guys I, I have been made lonely i've been made to live in isolation for years okay 
And I, coming from a person that has experienced that level of isolation despite being completely innocent with a healthy uh, mental state, if you want to call it that. Like I, I've got a, a healthy way with people, but I am being afflicted without cause. I'm being hurt for no reason by people. I'm innocent. How much worse is it going to be when you're not innocent, when you cannot be recovered? You know, at least not to society. You can only be recovered to God. The Lord will be the one that will give you mercy, but everybody else will have written you off. You don't want that because it's written in God's word that it is not good for man to be alone. That's why the Lord made Eve for Adam. He saw that it was not good for human beings to be alone and then created for the man, woman. So you as a human being, do yourself a massive favor. When you maintain the love in your life that you have, when you don't go out of your way to act as if though you don't need nobody, when you basically admit that you are a social being that needs other people, when you humble yourself to that reality, you will respect the relationships around you. You will respect what it is that can and cannot happen when you act a certain way. Because these psychopaths ultimately get to a point where they get worsened in their psychopathy. They get worsened in their vices. Do you understand? Precisely because people now want nothing to do with them. And I'm out here trying to now counsel some former friend of mine that is on their that shaky shaky path she's on those slippery slippery paths right and she is about to lose everything and everyone because of an extremity in her psychopathy that has manifest to the nth of itself that's always been there and it will cost her affiliation with human beings i had such a horrible dream last night with her doing something and then i also had a dream of the end result of that and that chick was so self a strengthening if you know what i mean that you would never imagine that that's the kind of person that would ever go out by suicide but i saw her literally putting a gun in her mouth and ending her life because she had lost everything she had lost everyone and she was now this creepy little weird thing that everybody was avoiding because she managed she, she magnified her sociopathy to a point of so much unacceptability in the sight of her loved ones her ecosystem that she was just now left to be a crazy woman she was just left to be somebody that just don't give two hoots about nothing listen guys this chick all of my friends from high school all of them cast spells on me in one way shape or form but it is not all of them that had a natural sociopathy i only had one that had a natural sociopathy and if any of my former friends from high school would watch this video, they would know exactly who I'm talking about because all of them would agree. Even though no one raised it, all of them would agree that if at all there were to be a competition of the most likely to commit genocide, who is the most likely out of the crew of girls to just go on a random killing spree one day? And then when the blood is splattered on her face, get a thrill, get a rush, be excited and feel like this is freedom. If at all, we were to be put in an assembly line, in a lineup and had somebody and had each and every single one of us pick who is the most likely to end up that crazy psychopath who would get a thrill out of blood splatter on their face after killing 20 people in one sitting, 20 people in one sitting. We would all, even though we anonymously vote with nobody having spoken in advance to biasly change that vote to influence that vote we would all consistently choose one girl because that chick had sociopathic tendencies from grade 10 from grade 8 from pretty much primary but yeah she was that girl she wasn't a liar she wasn't a thief but she was a sociopath this woman this chick at the time she was just a girl i guess so this girl was the kind that your grandmother would die and she would just be the only one in the crew of friends that just finds it really weird that you're all hugging the girl whose grandmother died she was the girl that when you had um, a change of temperature in the morning when you came to school and that you were not yourself she wouldn't be like what's wrong are you okay she would be irritated that you're not the same woman that you always were because everybody must just be consistent and when you change oh you're gonna bore me with all of your emotion she was not to be run to for a shoulder to cry on but if you wanted to laugh at somebody for a problem that she had in life she was the number one go-to girl she instigated all of the pranks on uh, on all of us she was always involved she was always the one involved in pranks but she was never the pranked one so if they wanted to prank me 
the ones who wanted to prank me would prank me with her if 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 i wanted to prank someone i would prank someone with her she was always a participant in little misdemeanors if we if we wanted to prank teachers if we wanted to do something really naughty even to teachers she would be the one that you could trust she would agree to do that while others would be scared trepidatious chicken she was never chicken to break rules however she came from an environment that had very strict rules and it's almost as if though when she came to school it was an opportunity for her to be exactly who she is deep down inside without the draconian control or the draconian surveillance of parents we all imagined our parents were draconian when we were growing up but this chick if she did not have a crew of friends that were not prepared to go stealing like i don't know chocolates from the store if she had that kind of crew of girlfriends she would have done that because she was always happy to break some rules in so far as she would have you know it's like she was supposed to be a neat little girl she was expected to be neat but anybody that would dare her not to be neat she would do it there was there was no end to what what, what she would be prepared to do in so far as you asked her so this is the kind of person that could be hired to assassinate someone and she would do it not even because she wants a hundred thousand rands but because she's just always wanted to assassinate someone that was that friend y'all need to understand this chick always had a sociopathy in her there is no one from my high school that would ever disagree with me there was always something absent she was I can't say she was not mean, but she was certainly very cold. She was not mean. She was not loving, however. She did not have care. The care that, you know, girls are always like, oh, what's wrong? Okay, yeah. Always hugging and whatnot. And she just looked at all that activity like, you know, the kind of person that when you hug her, she'd probably be like, stand there with limp hands, looking like a fishy and not reciprocate. Like on some, oh, okay. I guess you're going to finish doing that. And so I, I grew to know how to deal with that aloof disposition of hers and i also found out the hard way that when i'm feeling sad when i'm feeling down when i'm having issues at home with my mom or with another friend she's not the one that i go to because she just had no capacity to take emotions and when she was mad at people when she was angry at somebody that person would end up inevitably cowering to her because she was she she carried an energy that was scary if she was angry at you she was not a big girl she was not a, a thick butch inga you know basically the kind of person that if you look at her you don't you don't touch that you don't mess with that she could punch you beat you to a pulp no that chick had a way of subduing people just with an energy she had an energy even though she was not a big girl and it would cause you to not want to get on her bad side and that energy made it such that whenever she would be upset with anybody they would cower they would almost say sorry quickly but without really saying sorry it, it was one of those look i don't want to fight with you it's cool yeah type of person you don't enter into an argument with also if you wanted to raise something with her that you had an issue with she was not one to be spoken to because she would look at you like you're a mad woman like you're crazy for daring to think that she's actually gonna listen to you talk about stuff like there's nothing to talk about here she's the kind of person that would conquer you in an argument only because she is literally not taking you seriously as you speak like she would and no, she would not she would not so much raise her voice and talk into your words where it's two people bickering at each other but she was able to literally grab all of your words and swallow them like an apple whole and you would even see it go down the throat she would swallow you whole so we essentially learned how did all of us to tiptoe around her no one got into an argument with that chick because no one won not because she actually won the argument but because she swallowed everybody that challenged her whole with some energy that chick like yo my friends my former friends from school wouldn't know what i'm talking about there is only one of us that was like that only one only one and when then we got older and got out of high school i remember she told me a story we were chatting on on facebook you know that little messenger doo -doo -doo thing and she was telling me a story about how her sister-in-law she had to be held back from essentially scra scraping like just like her like yeah beating her to a pulp she was never physically fighty she was never the kind of person to fight you physically but she told me a story about how it is that her sister-in-law got on her nerves over a, a long amount of time 
because she was busy doing something that ticked that irritated her and she would she was she was just chilling in the corner letting it go letting it go and one day she said that her whole family her mom her dad her brother who was the sister-in-law's husband basically anyone that that could intervene and even her husband by then she was already married okay had to subdue her go fella they had to subdue her so that she does not like damage her sister-in-law who was older than her her brother was older than her by many years she, he was out of high school a couple of years when she was in grade eight so her sister-in-law was, uh, was also kind of older and i guess oh i guess more respectable because she was older and yet she had to be subdued because her sister-in-law did something and she kept on doing it until the whole family had to subdue her and for me when i heard her tell me that story i was like yo like yeah that's the kind of stuff that i could totally see you eventually getting to where you would beat your sister-in-law to a hospital where you would put her in hospital because something in you snapped you're not a physically violent person you're not the kind of person to just bully or enter into fights or, or just break a bottle on top of a person but after a while of feeling like something gotta give seeing as you are guarded by all of these rules you have all these rules in your life that have that keep you in a bunch you've got all these rules if you break them well i mean that's just gonna take away the thing that's keeping you in a bunch but one day something snaps and when it snaps it's like thread unraveling everything comes out and when she said that she had to be subdued by the whole family from basically finishing her sister-in-law it off making her powder and dust i was like whoa the first little stitch of that thing unraveling has come off this chick who is unhinged deep down inside she has a sociopathy something one day is gonna make her blow her top something one day is gonna make her basically thirst after blood something one day is going to be like this is who i've always been something one day is going to make her want to stand over seven corpses and there be blood splatter on her face and on her shirt and her be like finally i'm free i did what i've wanted to the, that chick was basically a murderer from the beginning she was the kind of person that looked like she would really enjoy the job of an assassin she had no feelings no emotion and she was working really hard for that to not be clear and all it would take to tip her over to the extremity of that would be the right circumstances even when she got married i remember thinking is she loving to her husband because she certainly wasn't towards her, us no one i could not see that woman being a woman in the very typical flowery sense so I, I couldn't imagine her in a marriage but she got married she got married and i don't want to give too many extra details because then it'll make it clear who exactly out of them all she is right but like this chick has always had something in her that was not cool and then she made a decision out of jealousy to start basically dabbling with sorcery to handle me i don't know how many other people she's done stuff to because witches rarely ever have one victim so she probably has other victims and when then you mess with witchcraft whatever it is that is the original demon set that was in that chick that made her like that that likely was the responsibility of her parents something that came into that child before she was born because she was not raised in a harsh cold environment that would make a child unhinged she came packaged with some entities and for that i blame some parents i blame these random males and females that are out here doing strange stuff while babies are being like manufactured in some stomachs and with her then coming into the world like that with that weird she was oh yeah that this chick no one could argue with her like no one could argue anyway i'm not gonna give more details because i don't want her i don't want it to be evident who in the world i'm speaking about because the only people who would be able to figure out who she is are my immediate like oh those who are closest to her everybody else would keep on wondering mm, come on, come on, and just wonder and wonder anyway whatever yeah okay so this cheeky <laughs> and she's the kind of person that if at all you were to find out that she drowned her four children you would be like okay yeah it, it's tragic it's tragic but i like I, I can see how things got there with her i can see how she had something in her that was just weird like the omen child she had that going down and so her involvement in the occult only exacerbated that sociopathy it did not exacerbate like with the one friend that was a pathological liar it did, it did not make her a bigger liar because she was never a liar it did not make her a bigger thief because she wasn't a thief it just made her a bigger sociopath a bigger psychopath a criminally insane assassin that's what it made her she already had that in her and it magnified and last night i got a dream of this little assassin shooting one of her friends multiple times 
like six bullets into the body of this woman right in front of her child because this chick said one thing and one thing only to her as she was confiding in her she said to her i am tired of living her friend said to her i'm tired of living my life is just so hard and she was telling her this in front of what is this she was telling her this thing in front of her child was there this kid's this, this woman's child daughter was there and this chick listened to her friend rapping and rapping remember i told you if at all you wanted to confide in somebody in high school that was not the one we went to she was not to be crowded on the shoulder or she just did not care my grandmother passed away and this chick was just aloof do you understand i was like sobbing and she was like oh one give me a whoa <laughs> yeah she does not like being she did not like being gone to for emotional advice and i would imagine that within her religion within her religious space within her activities that she does in order to look like a a, a regular woman she has women that likely go to her on some girl we need to talk uh, my marriage is this uh, my marriage is that and i do believe that this chick was entered into an arranged marriage and i believe that the way that she treats that arranged marriage of hers is the same way that angelina jolie treated the marriage of a brad pitt and her in the movie mr and mr smith there was no real love there it was a marriage by arrangement and it was going to work out for everybody in question so please let's just like do this and no need to get all intense and deep and what have you just stay in your lane and i'll stay in my lane so the emotions that come with the woman entered into an, an arranged marriage that is now sad because my husband is not loving or my husband is um you know abusive or, or, or my husband is detached and emotionally uh, uh he's emotionally absent or my, my husband i think he's having an affair I, you know this chick was basically heavied in my dream she was heavied by her life and she was there with her daughter and she was talking to her as a friend and the two of them literally they looked alike in my dream it's almost like they were twins they had the same beauty they had the same beautiful body beautiful face they had the same lives they had the exact same lives but she was nonchalant about her whack life for her it was like it's convenient i don't care she just did not care that she was entered into a strange marriage with a dude that she likely didn't even like that much because it was just working out she this is how life is when you have no emotion or when you have been robbed of an ability to truly be emotional you 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 won't even feel when you're in a bad marriage or a strange union that you you for you it's like but i'm able to shop every month i'm able to buy groceries and i have these three little babies here it's just what people are supposed to do isn't it when they get older get married have children i've done that like that chick was like that concerning her boring life and this a woman that was basically complaining about her stepford life too her stepford wife life too when she was burdened by it because she wanted more she wanted to feel like a woman because she thought she was shania twain yeah this chick was just like yeah like they were the exact same thing it's just however the difference was that the one was a sociopath while the other was a regular woman that was waking up basically to realize now that she's in her 30s that i didn't sign up for this like they put me in this you know the stuff that's happening in our faith in our religion it needs to stop like it needs to stop because i'm with this guy that i don't even like and here it is that i'm burdened and my daughter i can feel my pain and whatnot and ugu sindra by this other woman although the weight of sorrow on the heart of this other woman was uh, my former friend was like hey, hey, hey. she like she was visibly annoyed in my dream she was literally as this chick was busy rapping on about her life ne? she had a gun and it's a silver one in her hand and she was scratching her head with this gun she was scratching her head with this gun feeling very irritated by this woman that is wearing her out with her problems that are exactly similar to hers their problems were the exact same but she did not care about her problems while she cared about hers and so as soon as she said i don't want to live anymore so she basically confided in her friend and then got to a place where she said i don't want to live anymore she literally unleashed that whole gun into her body in front of her daughter she shot her something like seven eight times boo, 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 boo. like yeah and she passed away like right there i was so like i was uh, in my dream i was looking onto the situation and i was shocked out of my mind that she actually did that like she was scratching her head with this gun and when this woman finally said i don't want to live she just shot her and killed her when i woke up in the morning i was like god what in the world what did that dream mean and the lord was like this friend of yours this former friend of yours 
ever since being involved in the occult she has just graduated from height to height with her insanity and now she's about to do a human sacrifice ritual where she is going to kill a woman in her life a woman that has a daughter a woman that has got a child and they're in the same situation in the cult that they belong to they're in the same situation married to men they don't love and they are worn out but she does not have the requisite emotion to feel pained by that situation whereas women in her environment are and she's exhausted with them and because the one that keeps on coming to her she does not want to have to keep on being burdened by her coming back and having little teas and having to make cookies and whatnot having to bake and make sure that each girl but like there she felt irritated with the prospect of this chick and told her my grandmother died and she was like so and then moved on well everybody else was hugging me all day long that day nah she was like okay they're doing that weird stuff again so the very same thing that made her disinterested in my tears when my grandmother passed away is the very same thing that she felt towards her friend in my dream and she ended up murdering her because she imagined she was doing her a favor all that it took for her to kill her friend in the dream was her friend getting to a point on some i'm so miserable that i don't want to live anymore and then she unleashed seven bullets seven to eight bullets in her body and she passed away right in front of her daughter the lord was like this woman is about to commit murder Garab. she's gonna go to a sangoma and do a human sacrifice ritual remotely that is going to cause that woman to commit suicide that's gonna cause her friend to kill herself and then when she is dead she's gonna say but she needed help she needed to be nudged duh. she needed to like be helped she was not gonna do it herself and unangbora, and she was obviously unprepared to live and i was not about to go and listen to all that for the rest of my days frankly i was doing her a favor she saw nothing wrong with her killing her friend because to her she was doing her a favor she didn't murder her because she was sad sorry because she hated her or that she was angry she killed her because she was always complaining and made it clear that she doesn't want to live anymore and so she helped her along she helped her along and killed her Ebatung, y'all people random witches i know that you're watching my content like if you're gonna go killing some people using demonic spells and whatnot <laughs> comprehend that there is a god he does exist he does not aid any other religion but christianity he is the only mediator between god and man christ jesus he is prepared to embrace you he knows what demons your witchcraft practicing mom or dad or grandmother that caused you to get born with a sociopathy he knows how to uproot that entity he knows how to bring back emotion into your heart he knows how to restore to you the ability to feel he knows how to bring in you the appropriateness of response to a person's sorrow when a person is brokenhearted god knows how to make you see that and be empathetic because you get to bear the fruit of the holy spirit when you are born again you are given love as a fruit it's literally something that gets put into your heart when you get circumcised and delivered and born again when you get brought into the kingdom of heaven you are flooded with a change of heart you are one who meets with a 10 ton truck and are permanently changed so that sociopathy of yours from a friend from school you and i can never be friends again you done messed with my particular life and i don't appreciate that but herein lies the deal at this point you are skating on thin ice you're about to murder an innocent woman like step away step away from your human sacrifice ritual because you are exhausted by somebody complaining about the same life that you're living but you're not able able to feel the pain of the life that you're living because you just don't have those emotions that's a demon those are demons that is a a congenital problem that you have spiritually you are like a, a crack baby uh, or a smoke cigarette baby that's out here eating ashes out of an ashtray you were born with a natural inclination towards disregarding your emotions that's why you couldn't even hug me when my grandmother died in high school and now you're about to kill a woman because you think you're doing her a favor you think you're doing her a favor and you are gonna basically murder her using sorcery because you are burdened by how burdened she is and you know you're not the kind of girl to be listening to anybody's problems and yet there's somebody rocking up out here speaking to you about problems and she just won't leave you alone she won't leave you alone you are similar from what the lord showed me the two of y'all are the same you are beautiful women that are educated that are however in some strange environment that you should not be in and you are waking up now that you're in your 30s to realize Uti, i didn't sign up for this this is not what i want this is not a life and this chick however has emotions you don't have and so she's bereft over a situation whereas you're trying to cope with your sociopathy honey you're about to commit murder your involvement in sorcery has only taken your sociopathy to an nth degree you are about to commit a human sacrifice ritual to cause the suicide of a woman that you feel with all of her emotion and you don't want her to rub off on you you don't want her to rub off on you you don't want her to get you to a point now where you're also crying about your sad life you want to act like everything is okay and you think that the solution 
is for you to kill this woman so that you can carry on living your life as normal but of course you can't go and grab an actual knife because you're scared you're gonna go and grab spiritual means you unleashed in my dream seven rounds into the body of a woman seven to eight eight rounds and she was innocent in front of her one child she had a daughter she had a daughter that looked about seven eight nine years old and you killed this woman in front of one eye and i think the lord showed me the daughter because it's like this kid this daughter relies on only the mom because the dad can't be trusted so you're about to take a, a mother away from a child because you just want to relieve yourself from this emotionally weighty woman that however wants to die i mean she has vocalized it to you that she wants to die so you're just going to end her life you've always been bloodthirsty you've always had those murderous demons in you you've always had a natural inclination towards feelinglessness you've always had that going down and you have always been the kind of person that if at all one day in the future i were to find out that you killed seven people i wouldn't have been surprised even though i would have been sad you always had that going down for yourself and now you're about to kill christ can recover you to appropriate emotion you are in the wrong faith altogether you need to repent turn your life to jesus stop walk away from witchcraft and cause the and allow the lord to uproot whatever it is that caused you to be like that it's written in God's word that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. There is a stronghold you were born with, Chiki. Like, is that basic? I know that you watch my content because you keep on bewitching again. My, like, there are spells that you're casting on me. Yeah, thank God. Linda, I have said that I don't want to live. So what, were you going to kill me too? Like, what in the world? You are a little murderous psychopath. And once you have crossed the line of killing your first victim, there's no going back. You're then just going to start dropping people like flies because it's been a thirst in you because of the entities in your body that you were born with. Literally, do better. Repent. Ebatum. You are the psychopath of the crew of girls in school. Everybody knows that. And now you is about to kill some people remotely. Christ is the only way to uproot the demons that likely you got because of the irresponsibility either of your parents or your grandparents. Something caused you to be this cold little dastardly human being when you were growing up. To a point of it not being a surprise in the future. Should you have gone and killed 20 people in a bank robbery, not a bank robbery, Justin Jeffela on a shooting spree, like a, a mass shooting because you just woke up one day and decided to, you were that girl. You're the kind of person that would one day just blow a top. Like, you know, below, going to that documentary on TLC called Snapped Women Who Kill. You're that girl. You are the kind of person that would ultimately snap and kill an entire community of people because you're tired. You know that the kind of woman, you are the kind of woman that would go into a church and kill everybody there because you're sick and tired of how much they're running your life. You are going to get to a point where you're going to shed the blood of everyone that's ever irritated you because you got to that point if you do not repent seeing as you're trying to kill one of your best friends if you don't repent you are going to end up being a little genocidal creep that's going to have so much blood on her hands that you would be the equivalent or tenement of Inkabi now, like an assassin. You are going to thoroughly end up being a little spiritual assassin because it's always been all up in your grill. Everybody knows it. At least everybody that knows you knows that you was that assassin girl. So do better. God gave me a dream about your assassination of a friend of yours and I'm two seconds away from also dying because every so often I say, I want to go home. Every so often I say, I want to go to heaven, but you have not quite come at me because I think you're scared of my hope spirit yeah but like if you can go for that friend of yours it's only going to be a matter of time before you start coming for me with death spells and understand cheeky i've had so many coming at me with a flying kick when you come for me that's when god is gonna come for you just repent just repent you are five seconds away from committing murder literally just repent Buloi, habutus, all of y'all involved in the occult this is a warning to you too whatever are your vices in life they're gonna get worse and worse when you join the occult. Here it is that I have a former friend of mine that's about to become Inkabi Yonki Pelet. She's about to become an assassin. But an assassin nonetheless. Like proper. A little housewife assassin. Proper. Type of rubbish that you would find in a Hollywood movie. We is about to get ourselves a house, a Stepford wife assassin. That's out you're killing fellow Stepford wives. Do a better thing. Repent. I'm signing out in Christ's name. I hope you've been edified. Crank K. Peace.